So Donald Trump loses virtually every court battle, and yet, again today, a federal court of appeals delayed the release of Donald Trump's tax and financial information. Substantively, the state of our judiciary is strong, but procedurally, our courts are broken. Let's talk about that, because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So let me start with the positive. The state of our judiciary remains strong. Why do I say that? We have so many great judges, judges who are honest and ethical and hardworking and remain focused on the integrity of the criminal justice system and they hold prosecutors to account when they play the kind of games that a Bill Barr plays. Judges like Emmett Sullivan, who is fighting tooth and nail to hold Mike Flynn accountable and to reject Bill Barr's manipulation of the system to help Donald Trump. We have judges like Reggie Walton, a DC Federal District Court judge, who in his written findings said Bill Barr spun the Mueller report, mischaracterized the Mueller report, and Bill Barr lacks candor. We have so many judges who remain focused on ensuring that the criminal justice system works for us all, not just for Donald Trump's friends, allies, and criminal associates. On the substance, the judiciary remains strong, but procedurally, our courts are broken. Why do I say that? Well, today, the Second Federal Circuit Court of Appeals again delayed the release of Donald Trump's tax and financial information. Procedurally, our courts are broken because this litigation has been going on endlessly. Cy Vance, the prosecutor in Manhattan, subpoenaed this financial information because folks, we all know Donald Trump has been involved in financial shenanigans at a minimum and crimes at a maximum. And Cy Vance, prosecutor in Manhattan, wants to get his hands on the evidence that can prove it. It's kind of what prosecutors do. And Donald Trump's lawyers marched into court and they fought that subpoena for Donald Trump's financials and tax information, notwithstanding the fact that Donald Trump promised us all four years ago that he would be promptly releasing his tax returns. They fought it tooth and nail. Why? Because they know how damaging it will be to Donald Trump if his tax information and his financial records ever see the light of day. So they fight to keep it hidden from we the people and from the prosecutors. So Donald Trump loses in court, goes down in flames. So of course he appeals it to the Second Circuit Federal Court of Appeals. He goes down in flames there. So he appeals it to the Supreme Court. He goes down in flames there with the Supreme Court in July announcing no man is king, which we already knew courtesy of prior cases like the Nixon case, like the subpoena for Nixon's tapes where the Supreme Court said, yeah, in substance, no man is king, comply with the subpoena. Like the Clinton v. Jones litigation saying, yeah, no man is king, Bill Clinton, you can be made to sit for a deposition. We already knew no man is king. So what did the Supreme Court do after announcing no man is king? Donald Trump is, is um, he has to comply with the system like everybody else. They could have simply said, so therefore, Prosecutor Cy Vance gets the materials he has subpoenaed, but no. The Supreme Court sent the case all the way back down to the trial court, announcing that, you know, because Donald Trump is but a man, not a king, he can make any arguments to try to defeat Cy Vance's subpoena the way anybody else could make those arguments. 
which, mind you, Donald Trump already did the first time around. So why are we going through this hollow exercise again? And he made those arguments and he went down in flames. And what has he done? He's appealed it again to the Second Circuit Court. And today the Second Circuit Court said, well, we're going to delay the disclosure of these materials to Cy Vance while he argues yet another appeal. How many bites at the appellate apple does Donald Trump get to continue to try to hide information that will sink him? How many bites of the apple? Does the court really have to continue to be complicit in Donald Trump's weaponization of the delay that the courts are building into the system? And what happens when he go, goes down in flame for the fourth time or the fifth time, for those of you scoring at home, he'll appeal it to the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court will say, we told you half a year ago, no man is king. And what will they do? Kick it back down to the trial court again? So we're all back on that wheel spinning and getting nowhere? Procedurally, our courts are broken. The state of our judiciary is strong on the substance because they continue to tell Donald Trump, you're a loser in court. Your positions are frivolous. You can't win a single argument. But they allow him to weaponize the delay. So he's going to run out the clock. So by losing and losing and losing every battle, he's going to win the war of attrition. Here is what the headline said today after the Second Circuit Court of Appeals again delayed production. Federal court blocks release of Trump taxes while case is appealed. And the article reads in part, a federal appeals court in New York on Tuesday, today, temporarily halted a lower court ruling that would have sped up the di disclosure of President Trump's tax returns to prosecutors in Manhattan. Procedurally, our courts are broken. And we need to fix them. And the thing is, we can fix them. This is a relatively easy fix. I've suggested this previously. When you have these kind of time-sensitive disputes, they don't need to go on for months and years. A court can set whatever deadline a court wants to set. I have proposed when these time sensitive disputes come up, particularly what I call interbranch governmental disputes, like uh, Congress wants something from the executive branch and the executive branch won't give it over. So now you have an interbranch dispute between two co equal branches of government. We can't let those cases linger for years because. You know who loses? We the people. We the people lose. So all you need to do is create an interbranch dispute court, an IBDC court. And when these disputes, like subpoenas for Donald Trump's tax information and financial records come up, fine. The judge says to the parties, you have 72 hours to submit your briefs. 72 hours after that, you'll argue the case. 72 hours later, I will render my opinion. And the appeal follows the same timetable. 72, 72, 72. Justice can be done in under a month rather than years and years of delay and running out the clock. The courts cannot continue to let Donald Trump weaponize the delay because we are the ones who lose. Can I make a plea directly to the judges? Judges, can you give we the people a break here? Because we really need a break. With Donald Trump destroying every corner of our democracy, whether with, you know, it's his new harebrained scheme of herd immunity. Let everybody get sick. Let's cull the herd. 20% of the Americans will be lost. Or, you know, it is the racial division and tension that Donald Trump stokes every day because chaos is Donald Trump's friend. Because in the midst of chaos, 
corruption thrives. And Donald Trump's middle name is corruption. Judges, can you give we the people a break? Can you stop being complicit, innocently, tacitly, complicit with Donald Trump's weaponization of the delay in the court system? These cases don't have to linger for years. They can be resolved in weeks. Judges, if you just take the initiative and give we the people a break, because we could really use a break right about now. But tomorrow is another day that ends in Y. So we're going to get up and we're going to do it all over again and we're going to fight and we're going to register and we're going to make sure our friends are registered and we're going to get to the polls. And the blue wave that crashes over Donald Trump and his criminal cabal will be glorious. Glorious. And then in January, we begin to fix everything that Donald Trump and company broke. We will fix it. But I'll ask one more time, judges, can you please give we the people a break? Stay safe, folks. I look forward to talking with you all tomorrow. Thank you.